Hey, good evening. You've joined us right here on Market Hour. I'm Tanya Bharadwaj. Let's take you to the top story this evening. The much-awaited guidelines for new bank licenses have been released by the central bank. In a major climb down from its earlier stance, the RBI has removed the prohibitive clause on corporates engaged in the real estate or broking sectors. In effect, any entity now with a clean track record of over 10 years that meets the RBI's fit and proper guidelines will be allowed to apply for these licenses. The initial start up capital has been fixed at about 500 crore rupees but we've got banking secretary rajiv takru who says that the purpose of these guidelines really is to open huge investments in the sector licenses are expected to be issued by march 2014 purpose of bringing out these guidelines and inviting the private sector into banking was that we want uh, uh, a huge amount of investment to come into this sector that's point number one. At the same time, banking is an extremely sensitive sector. It is not a sector where you can have reckless players entering and playing around with, with uh, people's money. So all kinds of safeguards that have been built in have been thought of very carefully. And I think there's a purpose behind each one of them. From what I remember, I have not seen this, but what I have seen of the draft, I think the last date for applications is 1st of July? Yeah. All right. Now, if 1st of July is the last date and then there would be a lot of uh, examination or very careful examination of the applications which will come. And uh, there would be some diligence, which you have already mentioned. So I think uh, with a bit of luck and uh, all going well, if all the clearances come, then maybe at the financial year, we will Let's keep the focus on the new banking license norms. It's over then to our banking editor George Cherian for our special coverage. All right, so the final guidelines for new bank licenses are finally out. It's come out slightly earlier than many people were expecting. But let's get a better sense of what this really means for license hopefuls. And we've got one of them joining us on the show, uh, Sachindra Nath, who is Group CEO at Religay Enterprises, uh, joins us. We also have uh, Bharat Doshi, who is Executive Director and Group Chief Financial Officer at Mahindra and Mahindra joining us on the show. But, uh, gentlemen, both of you, thanks very much for coming in uh, to share with us uh, your views on uh, how this could move forward. Sachindra, let me start with you. Uh, would you say that, you know, the license uh, norms coming out in it, a final form is pretty much on expected lines? No, I think it's more than expected lines, uh, <clears throat> George, because I think so. Uh, it has been expanded and the pre-rejections which were there in the draft line, guidelines have been taken out. So the <clears throat> pre-rejection criteria like broking, real estate have been taken out. So it, and also PSUs have now been included. So it opens a very wide spectrum of players who can now participate in the, at least in the application process. And now it would be up to them to prove that they are fit and proper and they can uh, further the inclusion agenda of the government and the central bank. Right, Mr. Doshi, what would your initial reactions uh, to the new, uh, to the final guidelines be? First of all, I'm delighted that the guidelines are finally out. What also I am happy is that the emphasis has been given on a track record, on good governance, on integrity. I'm also get, glad that it is focused on rural area and inclusiveness, more particularly because Mahindra Finance is a company which qualifies on these counts. Right, so Mr. Doshi, how ready are you then to apply for a banking license? And again, how well are you positioned against other hopefuls? Well, the guidelines have been there for some time and therefore it has given time to companies to prepare what helped us today was to get the confirmation that we have all the options open that we have an option of starting a new bank from the group or the option of nbfc promoting a bank or the option of converting the nbfc now that these are all available one would look at what's the best way to go about it but that's one part of it. I can't disclose more till one has studied the guidelines in full and till these guidelines 
have been looked at by the board of the company. Right, Sachin, so just bringing it back to you now, the final guidelines clearly say that public sector enterprises will also be allowed to apply for new bank licenses. Do you worry that when these licenses are handed out, PSUs will be given preference over their private sector counterparts? <clears throat> no, I don't worry. Look, uh, you have to be very, very uh, clear that the need of the new bank is to further the cause of inclusion to bring that 50% unbanked population in the country into the banking foray, to further the infrastructure finance. Whether they, if this cost can be taken well, well taken care by either public sector enterprises or by private sector, it has to be seen in totality. And you will also appreciate the fact that government uh, over a period of time is reducing its capital burden of providing capital to the new banks. So if there is a public sector enterprise which, is, which can raise equity from the market and further these, uh, uh, these causes, obviously they should, uh, they should be given a chance. Any good enterprise which has a track record of good governance, which has a track record of being inclusive, which, has a, which can further the cause of infrastructure finance and uh, participate in the overall growth of the economy, should be given a chance. Whether they belong to a public sector or private sector is immaterial. Right, Sajinda, just picking up on that point you made on financial inclusion, I'm going to come back to you on that. But Mr. Doshi, bringing it to you, uh, on the issue of financial inclusion, 25% of a bank's branches will now have to be in unbanked rural areas. Do you believe this could possibly work as a deterrent for many license hopefuls? Well, it will be a deterrent for many. Again, there I'm not at the outset trying to say that it will be an easy walk for us. But... The fact remains that Mahindra Finance has 620 rural branches and with that kind of a size, rural and semi-rural branches, we would have a better chance than others to be able to qualify. Right. Sachindra, on the issue of financial inclusion, now, to the extent that 25% of the bank's branch network will have to be in these unbanked rural centers with a population of less than 10,000, would you say that the business model that all of you license hopefuls come up with will have to be, you know, significantly different from existing banks? And would you say that this actually proves to be one of the bigger challenges for you? So, uh, <clears throat> number one, George, I don't think so. This is a matter of surprise. It is in line with the policy intent of saying that new banks are required to become more, get more inclusive society and get more people into the banking. Now, how do you implement that and how you continue to build a sustainable business model around it is something which people need to work around it. We have been thinking about it uh, for a very long period of time. I think so Religair has been very patient in terms of its capital deployment and various business models. Over the last 10 years, we have built uh, multiple businesses uh, over a wide geography. Fortunately with us, today we have our largest shareholder, IFC which have expertise on financial inclusion, not just in one market, but multiple emerging market. And I think so with their help and with our experience over a period of time, what we would present would be a very truly sustainable long-term model, which is not only inclusive, but also is profitable for our and return accretive for our shareholders. Right, so Sachindra, you know, that 25% branch network thing isn't very different from the draft guidelines. Again, the large part of the final guidelines aren't very different from what we saw put out in August 2011. You've seen some changes in terms of the ability to enter the space. But, you know, to that extent, have you thought out how you're going to progress towards building out a bank, of course, should the license for you come through? Come out. There are no explicit sectoral leaving out of, uh, you know, there were talks about leaving realty and stock uh, stockbroking companies out. Uh, so does that mean all corporates and all sectors are allowed to bid for uh, li uh, banking licenses? Well, there is, uh, there is absolutely no one who has been left out mentioned by name. That is absolutely correct. At the same time, the criteria which has been given, it says fit and proper. So I think uh, fit and proper and the various definitions which are attached to it and the various stipulations which are attached to it are all there. I think we need to read them all very carefully and uh, due diligence will be done as for the guidelines. Sir, very strict, uh, uh, strict uh, stipulations you have put in as far as uh, uh, fit and proper are concerned. There are talks about how much 
the entities can lend to and what they can lend to, the amount of promoter involvement. They, you've talked about investigative agencies. So uh, do you think these things are going to act as a deterrent as far as uh, certain applications are concerned for corporate houses? No, I, uh, I would like to clarify that uh, the purpose is not that anything should act as a deterrent, but these are safeguards. Now, uh, when you build safeguards, safeguards are built for the purpose. Banking being a sensitive uh, sector, you have to have a certain set of safeguards there, and that is why these have been built in. Now, if it deters somebody, and I think I have said this earlier also on a couple of occasions, if safeguards deter somebody from entering a sector, then perhaps the safeguards have done their job. And we would be very happy if people make a decision based on the conditions which are put here not to enter the sector, which is perfectly all right. But the conditions are certainly sacrosanct. Yes. Sir, there is a stipulation of 49% FDI in the first five years and it has to be brought down. How much investment do you see coming in uh, as far as banking sector is concerned? And uh, do you see a lot of foreign uh, in interest coming in uh, for banking licenses as well? I uh, am uh, I'm not sure I can give you a figure. But all I can say is that uh, based on uh, whatever feedback we have been getting in the recent past, there is a uh, a great deal of interest which is being shown by various people and 49% uh, FDI means 49% so uh, it is ultimately the Indian I mean the resident who is defined in the policy as a resident it's the resident who has to lead it and I expect to see a very positive result sir by when by when do you expect no. the first batch of uh, licenses to be given out and uh, uh, you know there is also the PSU has been allowed to uh, uh, um, you know apply for licenses do you think they have an edge no as far as we see it we see it as a level playing field that's one and uh, second thing is uh, the game opens from today when the guidelines come out. The last date of application is the 1st of July according to the guidelines. And thereafter diligence and examination and advisory body and so on and uh, a very careful examination if I may add. I would uh, expect that uh, with a bit of luck and uh, good applications and good applicants we would be we would be very happy if you saw them coming this fiscal. Yeah. This fiscal is an FI 13 yeah. or FI 14 to say. This fiscal would be FI 13. No, I'm not this fiscal. I'm sorry. I mean next year. Yeah. Right. Next March. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, Sachindra, I'm going to bring it back to you. Sorry about uh, having to cut out at that point. But my question to you really was, uh, Sachindra, about, you know, the fact that the final guidelines aren't hugely different from the draft guidelines. So obviously at Relige, you've thought through how you're going to progress towards becoming a bank, converting into a bank, should you get a license? <clears throat> so if your question is that, uh, would Relige be converting into a bank or interested in converting into a bank? That's right. So as I, we have said this earlier also, and if I may repeat, I think so, given the large diversified financial services which we have built in India, uh, we service customer across from corporates, mid-size, SMEs, retail. It is natural for us to progress and have banking under our fold because it would help uh, us to service our customer better. And also given that we have done so much of work uh, around uh, SME financing and now uh, affordable housing finance, it is also a desire to do something which is more inclusive. The reason why uh, we have brought IFC as our largest uh, shareholder also to learn more about inclusion, learn more about how do you build a business which just not add profitability and return on equity but is also add value to the society. So in, uh, in view of all of that, we are very, very keen as management team, we will put our best foot forward. Uh, and then we have to see that uh, it is obviously it's in comparative uh, analysis and comparative uh, competitive process. Uh, if we come out better than others, obviously we should be converted or given a chance to build a bank in India. All right, Sajid, we'll come back to you. Uh, but just let's listen into DK Mittal, former banking secretary and now advisor to the finance ministry, uh, his reactions uh, to the final guidelines being put out.
And there's no question of, you know, we deciding. We decided, both of us decided together, that's my understanding. We are a capital staff country. Yeah, how many entities would have that kind of capital which we are looking at to be put into banking system? They could be good entities in each category, they could be bad entities. So should we be looking at the entities' background or should we be looking at the type of business they are doing into? These were the, you know, discussion between, held between the, the government and the RBI. And I think we have come to some understanding, which is a fairly good understanding. RBI is the ultimate decision maker, who to give a license, who not to give a license. Right. You know, Sachindra, I'm going to just bring it back to you now to the extent that, uh, you know, the new the new license hopefuls will have to come up with a different business model. Uh, would you agree that in your, you know, in your search for talent, finding the best people and rewarding them at market determined rates is not going to be so easy to the extent that you've got to pursue a slightly different business model where you need to focus on keeping your costs down? I think so you are presuming that the, uh, the search for the talent, the scarcity of the talent in other business is lesser than the banking business. Contrary to your belief actually, George, uh, the uh, availability of talent in the newer businesses, businesses like asset management, life insurance, capital market is far greater and far higher because those businesses are new in India versus commercial banking which has been uh, present here for a very long period of time. I think so we have to go and find sets of people who understand the value, who understand the ecosystem and who are aligned and motivated to build a banking business for long term. Having said that, as, we, as you know, we run a 15,000 or 40,000 odd crore non-banking finance business. <clears throat> we underwrite credit for more than now 20,000 SMEs across uh, 50, 60 markets. And we have a very strong management team which is spread across sales, distribution, underwriting, uh, <clears throat> treasury, uh, which itself would be a big value add when, when we have to convert our NBFC into a bank. And Religion has demonstrated over a period of time the ability to bring talent across our various businesses, right from CEOs to the full management team, and who have delivered and created business value in a very short span of time. And that is a combination of the model of sharing the wealth in form of the equity. And I think so we will follow that model here again. Right, uh, Sachindra, we'll come back to you in just a, a, a moment, uh, or rather there's another issue uh, that uh, came up. That is, you know, the fact that in the draft guidelines, if you look back at the draft guidelines, the RBI had uh, suggested in the draft guidelines that, you know, corporates that actually get a bank license should not be allowed to use their brand name when they do get that bank license. Uh, they've stayed silent on that issue in the final guidelines. Would you say that's a big positive that you will actually be allowed to use the brand when you set up the bank? Yes, I know both. Um, uh, the reason for that is that there is a global trend where people are uh, saying that the large brands which are not connected through financial services, uh, there should be a deterrent that those brands should not be used for financial services because there may be a tendency for people believing in the brands more than the, uh, more than the capital power of the business itself. Having said that, in Indian context it is very different because large brands in India people tend to rely upon them and they are seen as much more trustworthy. So I think so from that perspective in Indian context, the furtherance of cause of new banks would, would get enhanced when these large groups or the trusted brands can be used for the brand as for the bank itself. As far as us are concerned, Religare is a brand which is predominantly for financial services. Uh, the group's other businesses, which is healthcare, is in a different brand. We don't uh, converge brand for businesses, and that has been the tradition for our group. Right, we'll come back to you, Sachindra, but uh, Mr. Doshi, bringing it to you, you are already in the financial services space. Do you plan to convert Mahindra Finance into a full-fledged bank? Well, we'll definitely look at this opportunity. But also, Mr. Doshi, the cross-holding norms are really stringent. For instance, the bank's holding company cannot deal with equity and debt of any group companies. Do you think it could come in the way for many uh, license hopefuls? No, I don't see any problem at all. Because I think it is the right thing that there should not be any inbreeding and putting money into group companies, etc. The bank should operate as a bank with arm's length transactions with the outside world. Right. Again, you know, Shachindra, in the initial draft guidelines, the RBI had clearly said that banks will have to list within two years 
of uh, the license being given to them. In the final guidelines, they say three years. Do you believe this relaxation is uh, useful for you that you'd have ideally liked it to have been a little more time that you got? Yeah, I think so. If you were to set up a new bank from, uh, from the beginning, then either it is two years or three years, both are insufficient to list, uh, list a business because you have to have certain size of scale, profitability to attract global institutional investors. But for the people who would convert their existing non-banking finance business, uh, because those businesses already have the profitability, already have scale, three years is a very, very good and sufficient time. All right, let's also get some more reactions to the new bank norms being put out. Let's listen in to Ashwin Parekh, who's National Leader for Global Financial Services at Ernst & Young. Now, on account of this particular climb down, even uh, people from who have a large presence in real estate or in the broking business can also apply. So can therefore, to that extent now, the regulator will have to, or the committee that the regulator will form, will have to really evaluate the applications, uh, uh, you know, in terms of any contagion risk that, you know, the presence of these people in speculative business can bring about. I'm not certainly expecting, you know, 150 or 200, I mean, 200 people to get licensed. And so to that extent, that part of the evaluation will now be done once, let's say, people have applied in keeping with the guidelines. Right, uh, Shachindra, if we just take it back to the, uh, you know, the 25% of a branch network having to be in uh, unbanked rural centers, apart from that clause that the RBI has brought into the final guidelines, they have said that the new banks will have to continue to stick to existing priority sector lending requirements that are applicable to domestic banks. Uh, do you believe that that could have been relaxed a little because you already are heavily focused on financial inclusion on the one hand already? I think so you should look at the broader message which the central bank is trying to give. The broader message is if you want to take banking, banking in India is a very, very profitable business. Most of the banks generate more than 25% return on equity. But to get to that level, you have to be you to have to have capital backing and you have to have patience. And that's why whether it is the capital adequacy which has been kept higher, whether it is to apply the same prudential norms uh, in terms of the priority sector lending or whether it is the 25% branch norm, all of that would lead to slightly higher amount of capital and more longer wait period for you to become really profitable and generate uh, a very attractive return on equity. But people who really genuinely believe, who have the ecosystem and who have desire to be banned should be fine with that. And that's my belief. All right. We'll come back to you, but let's just uh, get one more reaction. K.R. Kamat, uh, chairman of the Indian Banks Association, who has said that the new norms are on expected lines. I think they are uh, almost on the expected lines. Uh, I think uh, the RBI has taken care to see that uh, all those uh, uh, required precautions are taken. At the same time, uh, there is an open space available to everybody. There are very clear guidelines on lending to the, uh, the promoter groups, which has been, I think, again reiterated today that uh, any board, any company, any bank cannot lend to the, the promoters groups. Uh, I mean, and there are very clear restrictions already existing. So it is not the question of uh, key, what are the other activities of the promoters, but it is what the bank, particular bank does. To that extent, I would say that there are sufficient safeguards on that. Mr. Doshi, new norms allow even public sector entities to apply for a license. And this is a question that we'd asked Sachindra just a short while ago. Do you think this will give them an edge over their private sector counterparts? Well, I hope not. I feel that it is a good thing to allow a level playing field to everybody. On the other end, I'm sure that RBI will be fair and not be, have a bias in favor of public sector against private sector. And Shachindra, coming back to you, one concern that was raised by many people we spoke to once the final guidelines came out was, despite the fact that the RBI has said that the majority of board representation has to be from independent directors, there continues to be this concern 
and this big question mark or continuing question mark about how independent are independent directors there's this concern that you know that's not really going to work in terms of sound governance would you agree with that would you disagree no i completely agree i think the corporate governance and the <clears throat> role of the independent directors in india in any way is up for debate uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of work going on around that and that need to be strengthened uh, obviously it need to be strengthened for the financial sector uh, much more strongly but it has to be strengthened for overall corporate sector itself and <clears throat> but that needs some some rethinking and overhaul because you need to have a panel of one you need availability of such large number of independent director into the country you somebody need to evaluate their qualification experience and uh, <clears throat> and their linkages and desirability for or of a particular corporate and then somebody need to create a database and pre qualify them before companies can select because what should not happen is that in the name of independent directors you have people who are on the boards of the company for 15 years 10 years because they no longer remain independent neither they can remain objective because they are too close to the company so all of that need to be done but as far as the banking is concerned i think so the, the norm for nosc is 50% independent director and banks to have independent board is good and especially in case of banks and financial sub banks reserve bank would be approving each of the directors which itself is is a good uh, deterrence uh, wherein they would see which are the people who are coming on the boards of the bank which is not the case in case of uh, ordinary corporates all right sachindra nath and uh, mr bharat doshi both of you thanks very much indeed for joining us on our special coverage of uh, banking the next wave where we've looked at the new license the final guidelines for new bank licenses show brought to you by Globe Detective Agency for